If you think about windmills in Indiana today, this might just be the image that comes to mind. Fields of turbines, like these in Madison County, harness the wind and provide power for the surrounding area. Around a century ago, the scene would have looked more like this. This was the era of the agricultural windmill, and nearly every farm had one. Wind power was very important because you had water to cook with, uh, cattle, uh, to take a bath. If you didn't have the windmills back then, there was no way to get water up from the ground. The windmill was also an integral part of the westward expansion. They would have windmills against the track and they would fill the steam engines that would go into a tank and then the tank would fill into a steam engine. But at the same time, that windmill could also take care of the cattle in that area, so it was a dual purpose windmill. And for more than a quarter century, a unique, nearly one-of-a-kind museum in Northwest Indiana has been keeping this history alive. We are in Kenneville, Indiana at the Mid-America Windmill Museum. We're only one of two museums open in the United States. There's another one down in Texas. May 23rd, 1994, we had a grand opening of our museum. When we first started, we just had 10 windmills. We are up over 50 some in, in display at this point, and we have more to go up. So we have just gained a lot through the 25 years. And when we look back, it's amazing what you can accomplish. The museum, located on 40 acres just east of Kendallville, is run entirely by volunteers. They work to maintain the grounds, give tours, and staff the gift shop. And not surprisingly, a lot of volunteer hours go towards maintaining and restoring the windmills themselves. And it's very intensive. The one we have over here that was a wooden windmill took 160 man hours to reassemble and get it back to, to new again. We have another metal one over here, it took 100 hours. It's very time intensive and you gotta know what you're doing. So why Kendallville? At one time there was 90 windmill companies within an 80 mile radius of Kendallville. This was kind of a hub with Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. The largest of these 90 companies was Kendallville's own Flint and Walling, at one time the second largest manufacturer of windmills in the country. And their first made windmill was in 1878. They quit making them in 1954. There were 11 different models of flint and walling windmills, each an improvement on the previous generation. When they first started making them, they were wood windmills. That's what everybody did. Then later on, they got into the metal windmills. And we have all 11 in our collection. We don't have them all up yet, but we do have all 11. We have one outside uh, that is hooked up to a well. It's the only one we have hooked up to a well. It is the last windmill off the assembly line of Flint and Walling. And it, that's a very neat feature for us to have. Flint and Walling, which long ago made the switch from windmills to submersible pumps, is still very much a part of Kendallville. And the windmills that bear their name are very much a part of the Midwest Windmill Museum. But they're not the only windmills you'll find here. In fact, the majority of these are from other manufacturers. We are a windmill museum that features actually three different types of windmills. A water windmill, which most people see that the Amish use today. Uh, another windmill is a power windmill, which uh, will run a shaft from a windmill to a piece of equipment and run a corn sheller or a saw or something like that. And then we have the Robertson Post windmill, which is a grinding windmill. A lot of them are different models of the same company, like Air Motor made many different models of windmills. So some uh, didn't make as many models or only ever made one. A unique museum, celebrating and sharing a unique part of Hoosier history. We've had people from all 50 states. We've had uh, 44 foreign countries represented with people here. 
which when you think about it, that's a lot of different people visiting from all around the world. So it's been really a neat attraction to our community.